on here guys and today we're talking about the DJI FPV drone system and why this is one of the most significant drone releases that we have ever seen and I'd almost argue one of the most significant flying crafts that we may see in several years and many years to come. Now there's been a lot of really excited people and really upset people at this release. Um, some controversy, if you will, but I'm going to really break down um, what this is, who this is for, and why some of the big reviewer camera drone channels like Ken Huron is absolutely wrong. He starts his review saying this is a piece of crap. The DJI FPV quad is a piece of shit. And it's not a piece of crap. Kid, you got it all wrong. You're really confused. And I'm going to tell you that a lot of the camera drone people are puzzled by this. And a lot of the freestyle drone people like this drone that I've built up here, which is the Catalyst Machine Works Shocker Tank, are confused by this as well. When that's because it says FPV on the side right here. I think that's what's causing all the confusion and the controversy. Now, what FPV means to the RC community that fly things like this, that build their own crafts, it means really freestyle. It means diving down the side of the building. It means getting that shot, doing that trick, following and getting shots that are not possible in any other type of aircraft because you have full manual control to do aerial maneuvers. It also means being able to carry the premium cameras. Um, this mount right here is made for the GoPro Hero 9, which is the top level action camera on the market, meaning that with the GoPro Hero 9, this is a professional class rig. I could take this out, get a job, get paid to get footage of a car drifting, of real estate exterior, or on a film set. Um, in the same way, a Mavic 2 Pro or a DJI Inspire are also professional class rigs. And there's actually been a third class that's come out very recently, large drones that can carry actual cinema cameras like the Alexa Red Komodo and things of that nature. So why it's confusing to RC enthusiasts is because this is a pro level piece of gear. Even if you don't use it for earning money, this is the same exact type of thing that somebody who was would use. On the camera drone side, those things are pro level gear. This is not a pro level piece of gear. This is what in the camera world you would call prosumer. Now I get why it confuses the RC guys because there is no prosumer class, but anybody who is into cameras knows the difference between a Canon 80D, a Canon 5D, and a Canon 1D. That's your entry level, your prosumer, and your professional class. This is prosumer, and people are comparing it to professional level. That's not what it's meant to be. So footage-wise, it's not going to be good as a GoPro Hero 9. It's not going to be good as a Mavic 2 Pro. Here's a little bit of footage comparing the camera of this to the GoPro Hero 9. I think the GoPro Hero 9, I did have an ND filter on there, uh, does look a little better. It looks a little sharper. It looks a little nicer. Um, but this is no slouch. This is really nice footage. I do also hate that the props are in view. They have red tips on the props. If they would have made these clear or even gray, it would be far less uh, distracting to have that on there. So it's not perfect. There are some gripes. There's some room for improvement. But this is... Flight-wise, it's not going to be dynamic or durable or sturdy or crash-resistant as a home-built freestyle drone. So what is this? This is a piece of equipment that will allow anyone to fly. I've already let two non-FPV pilots fly this. They were able to fly it with 30 seconds of instruction, go off on their own, there was no crashes that happened. They were able to experience the miracle of flight. This puts you in the cockpit of this craft. And with all of the DJI auto level GPS hold safety features, flight is incredibly easy. 
So this is an FPV experience that anyone can experience and get extremely good footage. Yeah, these are um, these are not exactly the most comfortable goggles, but yeah, the camera is on like a gimbal because yeah, it's, it's not moving with me. It's 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 giving me super stable video. Really fun toy, that's for sure. Um, it was way easier than I thought to um, fly it, not having ever flown a, a drone before. This doesn't mean that I'm going to take pro quality photography that's, or anything. That's, yeah, that's right. So, eat, like this would be, I would be able to use this and go follow around some cars or go follow around yeah. some stuff, but. I wouldn't be even close to being able to get the kind of footage that like you would be able to do with your full manual control on probably both the camera and the the the, the drone itself. The learning curve to build it and get it and set it up is like for me it was probably like 40 50 hours and then to learn how to fly like that without obliterating it was like another you know, 40, 50, 100 hours. And so to try it, you're in for like almost 100 hours. Whereas like you could try it, do the updates, activate it in an hour and then we'll fly it. So that's, see, that's, that's typically backwards of like hobbies and things where you, you'd want to start something low cost, learn how to do it, and yeah. then you get better at it. But this gives you kind of a, I pay a bunch of money, I get it going, it does a lot of this stuff for me, but then if I ever wanted to go and be a little bit more in depth in how to fly a drone, I then would have to go backwards, start at the beginning That's again. True. So, you know, it really, I'd be, I'd be in like, I'd be out double the cost there because this doesn't seem to me like it, it would be something that I could do anything other than play around with. It, it's true, I think it's a gateway. It's like right now there's been a skill wall um, behind being able to try it. Now you can pay to unlock, try it immediately. <laughs> and, I, and there's no upgradability on this, right? I mean, not so what you, far. Once you buy it, you, you're, you're, that's, that's what you pretty got. Much it. Uh, and that's why there's so much confusion surrounded on what this product is and who it's for. You see, DJI already monopolized the consumer camera drone space. And with their DJI FPV system, you see this is a home-built drone, but this camera system is DJI. So now that they have both, they created this system, been testing it, and we wondered in the RC community, why did they do this for us? Like, it's awesome, but why did they do this for us? Well, they were proving the technology in order to be able to release this product. How many times have Mavic users come to us as RC enthusiasts and said, how can I fly goggles on my Mavic? How can I fly goggles on my Mavic? And the answer is not always that easy. Now, it is easy. And the other thing that is very interesting is there is a paywall and a skill wall and a flight skill wall that surround this home-built drone. It takes 20, 30, took me about 40 hours of figuring out what the components needed to build something like this were, how to set them up in the software, how to actually solder them together, which is another skill that you need to have, how to troubleshoot, and that doesn't even include the 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 hours required to actually learn how to pilot this thing because the skill curve is extremely steep. This is a pay to unlock feature. This is a pay $1,300, you get the entire system, everything from the charger to the controller to the goggles, everything needed. You update for about an hour and then you are ready to go off and fly, boom. Getting to this point to fly this took me a couple of hundred hours. Now there's a lot more resources today than five years ago when I started flying, so you could potentially get there in 50 to 100 hours, but that's still quite a lot of time. This is pay to unlock. This is don't spend a hundred hours. This is spend one hour, go out, fly. Now, it, a lot of people will say you can do this cheaper. You can do this cheaper. Well, this controller for the DJ system is $200. This controller that I'm using is closer to $300 with the Crossfire module and upgraded antenna and the batteries and the battery charger needed to charge this. This 
is all inclusive. Everything needed to charge it, everything needed to power it, it's easy to connect. This is like its own set of gear that I had to acquire in order to be able to pilot this rig, learn how to set it up, learn how to configure it, all separate from the configuration and setup of that drone. Do you see why it's so complex? People come up to us when we're racing or just flying and they're like, oh man, I wanna try that. The number of answers we have to give them is, well, first you wanna buy a controller and start practicing on the simulator. Then you need to buy this, they need to buy this, you need to learn how to do this, and you learn how to do that. By the time you get to the 10th thing on the list out of about 50 things that you have to list for them, their eyes are glazing over and they're like, okay, this is too complex, I can't do this. Now you can. If your time is worth 20, 30, 40 dollars an hour, and you don't want to spend a hundred hours, how much are you actually saving here? Speaking of savings, this setup's 1300 dollars. This setup. As it stands, with my goggles, with my radio, with my charger, with this GoPro, is closer to $2,000. So when people say you can go fly for cheaper, yet, yes, you can fly a toy grade um, piece of kit like this. You can get up in the air for about $200 on an analog signal. So this picture is going to look very ugly. It's not going to be usable to play back and record. A lot of people are going to be better starting out with this, dipping their toe in. But if you are a Mavic user and you've always wanted to try FPV, if you're not a drone user at all and you've wanted to try to fly a drone and get that immersive experience, flying a drone from the ground line of sight is extremely fun. Flying anything is fun. But after a few hours, it's like you're flying a kite. You're on the ground, you're looking at it. As soon as you get it a little far, it's just like a speck in the sky. Flying FPV is an immersive experience that puts you in the craft. It is as if you are flying. And Elon Musk, who is the real life Tony Stark, doesn't even have his own Iron Man suit to allow him to fly. So what are the chances that you are ever gonna get to fly unless it's in a system like this? That's why this is so significant. It's not a professional grade class piece of equipment. It's a prosumer kit that allows you to unlock, pay to unlock that, go straight to FPV. Now, as I mentioned, it did take me a little over an hour to perform all the updates. Read the instructions. You're gonna to wanna to connect to your phone to apply the updates to this. You're gonna to wanna to get it activated. That's gonna take you about an hour, hour and a half. So just budget for that. There are some issues with this thing though. It's not perfect. My main issues are the geofencing is not always the greatest. I had some issues where I wanted to fly this thing. I finally got it set up at about 9.30 at night. I went to go fly it. I was so excited, guys. I was so excited. I got there. It's dark, but there's some lights around. I go to take off and it's like, nope, you're too close to an anti-fly zone. And so we are outside with Johnny Five in a parking lot. All right, That's the church over there. And he is testing out what that you just got in? This, the DJI FPV drone. All right, let's see it. And it's dark because UPS didn't come till 7.30 and it took another hour and a half to get all this updated. It was a while. Can't take off. Disappointed! I was so far away from the airport. It's crazy, man. Um, I actually went two miles closer in the direction of the airport, port, still several miles away, and it let me take off there. So it wasn't even a distance thing. It's just the geofence is really strange on this. The other thing that's a little bit annoying is the back two pieces of where your battery are are essentially the landing pad. You land on these little arms right here, which there's antennas on there. Um, so you're landing on antennas and battery. That's a big no-no in our world of building up our own drones. I don't like that. This is not crashable. This is not going to take an impact of any kind. Um, so think of it as getting a car <laughs> or another camera drone. They're not crashable. You wouldn't crash either of those and expect it to survive. You're not going to want to crash this. I think a lot of people, even though this can do manual mode and fully unlock acro mode, as we call it in FPV, um, I think most people are not going to want to do that 
for a very long time. You're gonna to wanna to get completely confident and used to flying this thing. Sport mode will allow you a lot of that feel, except you just can't tip all the way over. Sport mode will increase the speed from about 33 miles an hour to about 63 miles an hour. Sport mode will really give you some of the thrill of flight that we can experience. I would really recommend never even enabling manual mode until you have a lot of flight time and you have flown manual mode on a simulator. Do not let this be the first manual mode experience um, that you fly. People say this thing is heavy. This with the GoPro is about 640 grams without a battery. This without a battery it's 500 grams, so it's actually lighter without the battery. So, I mean, you know, it's still heavy, but come on. So to recap, if you could imagine a Venn diagram of two intersecting circles of camera drone users and RC FPV users, and there's a part in the middle of people who do both, DJI kind of is starting to own both of these circles. So how do they increase their profits? How do they increase their market? They can't because they already own the markets. The only way is to create a new market of people who have wanted to try FPV, but it's too complicated. Who are the people that are in FPV today? It's IT guys like me, it's skateboarders, it's artists, it's mechanics. What do all those people have in common? They're the kind of people that will try something over and over and over and over again until they get it, until they get that kickflip going down the stair rail, until they troubleshoot that thing and it works. But the reason we've stayed in long enough to surpass that tech skill gap and that flight skill gap was because we have those kind of skills and those kind of personality traits. But there could be plenty of other people who would be good pilots who just don't have the patience for that. This is gonna help them get in the air. This is gonna help them experience the miracle of flight. This is gonna help them know how great it is, then they'll have more of an incentive to learn. Once you get in here, this is not the end all, this is the introduction. And you're gonna go one of two places. You're gonna decide, I want a little bit better camera footage, and you're gonna go get a Mavic 2. Or you're gonna decide, I wanna be able to do tricks, put on a GoPro and do full manual and not have to worry about crashing, and you're gonna to come to our RC FPV side. And so DJI has positioned this in the middle of two directions, both of which are in their ecosystem. Now, do you see the moves that they've been making to arrive at this product launch? They're playing chess, guys. This ain't checkers. The shit's chess, it ain't checkers. So as I've already proven, got two new pilots up in the air. That's who it's for. It's for the Mavic user who's always wanted to try FPV or for the drone user that's always wanted to try FPV. It's for us enthusiasts who want to be able to hand somebody something and fly. You know how many times I've tried to hand somebody a drone that doesn't know how to fly, even one that I thought was very simple? You know the number of times that somebody has not crashed it in a matter of seconds? My buddy Derek, I've known him since kindergarten. We worked together at NASA for years. He flew this, his first time flying a drone. He asked me five times before I actually handed it to him, are you sure you want me to fly this thing because I've never flown a drone before? I said, yes, he didn't crash it. Within two hours of getting back home, he's texting me saying, great, now I'm looking at drone parts. That's who it's for, guys. That's who it's for. That's why Ken Heron is wrong. He's comparing a prosumer product to a pro level product. That's why a lot of the FPV community is wrong. They're comparing a prosumer product to a pro level product. If you have already passed the skill wall of learning to build, of learning to fly, and you can fly a freestyle rig with a GoPro Hero comfortably, is this for you? No, you're already over here. This is down, a step down. Now, it's cool to have one to be able to let other people enjoy the experience of flight. I was able to chase this thing with my freestyle rig and all of a sudden, I could go flying with a buddy that I've known for years that could never have went flying for me. I could go flying with my kid who has not been able to fly with me since I was flying a Phantom. And being able to enjoy flying with somebody like that is just, I can't tell you how rewarding it is. 
You know, the amount of time that I had to put into this hobby in order to be able to take off a drone and fly it and see through the goggles and look down and feel like I was flying in the air like Superman was so long. And finally, there is a way that I can hand somebody the controls and they can fly immediately. That's why this is the most significant RC drone release possibly of all time. Is it for everyone? No. Is it Toyota Camry for everyone? No. For the people that build their own gaming rigs, is a gaming rig that you buy off the shelf from Dell for you? Are people gonna make fun of you for doing that instead of building your own? Possibly. If there was no bicycles in the world, and the only people that were riding bikes were people doing mountain bike jumping or BMX racing, and all of a sudden they came out with a bike that you could ride through your neighborhood. Those people would say, you can't take that on jumps. You can't take that on a race. What's the fun in that? Riding on your street? Who wants to do that? But if you've never ridden a bike before, the first time riding a bike, do you remember how fun it was as a kid? Imagine instead of riding a bike on the ground, you were flying through the air. Thanks guys. Oh, and there's a spotlight on it. That's pretty cool. Turn, they should turn off when I get high enough. Oh.